Good evening. This is Chairman James Dickey of the Republican Party of Texas. Thank you so much for joining us tonight with a chat with Fabian Vasquez, the Republican nominee for CD33. Fabian Cordova Vasquez is a Texas native, a third generation Hispanic, a single father, a strong believer in his faith, and a servant in his church and the community. Fabian has served the community for many years, including church outreaches, back to school bashes, food drives, and serving the homeless needs. His professional experience spans over 20 years in both business management and the medical field, specializing in orthopedics and biologics. Fabian continues to fight for Texas's 33rd congressional district on a platform of faith, family, and freedom with a message that is clear and empowering. His campaign continues to bring awareness, educate, and empower every individual he meets in his district by encouraging yeah. them to make an informed decision for their families by not just getting out to vote, but to vote conservative. Yes. His campaign motto is, we get to serve. What yes. a great motto. Please tell us more about yourself, Fabian. Chairman Dickey, uh, Dickey thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, yeah, that's in a nutshell. My name is Fabian Cordova Vasquez, and I am a God-fearing Texas native, third-generation Hispanic, father, servant, giver, a professional taxpaying citizen, and I was made in the USA. <laughs> I have multiple experiences in in, the, in my career. You know, as you mentioned, the medical field specialized in orthopedics and biologics. Also, I've, I've played around, and I still am, in the commodity market with uh, precious metals, um, but and with all the experience that I have in both business management and retail, the most rewarding and the most important is being able to serve. And it all, it all has to do with my church. And I just want to take this opportunity just to thank my church for accepting me for who I am. I would not be the man that I am today if I did not learn how to serve. So a big thank you to, my, to all the pastors that surrounded me with love and took me in and, and discipled me and showed me how to see the need in the community and have a giving heart, have a servant's heart. So a big thank you to Refuge Church, my pastors, Pastor Carlos Ros Ramos, my mentors, uh, Pastor Tony Garcia and Bruce Engelman. Wow, that is, uh, that is absolutely fantastic. And I obviously, personally, I have seen you out and about at, at multiple yeah. events. I, I saw you just this weekend out and about. Yes. Yeah, we've been staying busy. I mean, we're fighting the good fight. We have a we have a nation to fight for. Amen. The, the stakes could not be higher and the, the cause could not be more just. That's right. Uh, Amen. Well, and, and along those lines, what really put, what, it's a significant sacrifice to run for office. And what made you decide to run for public office? Yeah, so it all started uh, with my church. You know, I've been involved in many outreaches in my community, in my church, and I began to see the need in our community. I began to see the hurt in our community. You know, District 33 is one of the lowest income districts in Texas. And I began to open up my eyes and I began to ask questions. I was blind, but now I can see. And I began to ask myself, who is representing us? And then when I would do some more research and I would knock on doors and just, you know, ask family and friends who live or my neighbors who live in the community, shockingly, they had no idea who was representing them. And that concerned me, not just as a citizen, not just as a candidate, but that scared me. And uh, there has not been change since this district was first created in 2012. And I woke up one morning and I, I prayed about it and I asked for confirmation. I said, Lord, is this something that you want me to do? And if so, I need confirmation on top of confirmation because for I am just a servant. And uh, sure enough, he opened up those doors and I made some amazing relationships with you, you know, with our Tarrant County GOP, Rick Barnes and our Dallas County, Rondi Anderson has been very, both of them have been very supportive with this campaign. And those doors began to open. And the, the amount of support in our community, not just pouring in from District 33, but all around, all around the nation. Uh, we, are, we are currently endorsed by the uh, Republican National Hispanic Assembly. Uh, we have so much support of the change that we're doing, the, the, uh, exec, the, uh, the, the strong presence that we have, that we care about our community. We care about our neighbors. We care about change. We can do better and we will do better, but it starts with having the right representative. Again, I'm not talking about a politician, but I'm talking about someone who does care, who does serve the community. And that's what I'm fighting for. That's fantastic. 
Well, tell you're, you're and you're doing that fight in Congressional District 33. Tell us about that district. Yeah, so District 33 is one of the lowest income districts in Texas, currently occupied by an incumbent Democrat, Mark VC, who does have ties with uh, with communists. I'm not going to bash him, but I'm going to call him out on what he stands for. Uh, District 33 is primarily Democrat, and it was designed that way. You can ask any political strategist, and they will tell you that it's almost impossible to flip. Uh, it's not even on the political radar. But they do not know the God that I serve. For this campaign is truly, this fight is truly a David and Goliath fight. And I already know how this story is going to end. Currently now, a majority of our district is minorities. 64.9% is Hispanic, which is a good thing because we are conservative. It's also a double-edged sword because we have to get the awareness, the empower them to vote. And that's what we're doing in our district. Uh, the average person in District 33, uh, Chairman Dickey, is only a less than 60% graduate high school. Only 9% have a bachelor's degree or higher. That's in District 33. The average person has to drive 23 minutes outside of our district for a good paying job. Our Congressman, Mark Vesey, continues to advocate for the low income, but does absolutely nothing to empower them with fake promises. Um, and again, we can do so much better. And again, the majority is Hispanic, the majority is minorities, and that's what we're doing. We're knocking on doors while my opponent is, is in the AC. My, my team and myself are knocking on doors, bringing awareness, educating, and empowering those individuals to vote. But like you had mentioned in the intro, but to vote conservative. And that's what we're doing. We're fighting the good fight. And there is a exodus that is occurring away from the Democrat Party. And I believe that uh, District 33 will be a victory. There will be a change for the very first time, Chairman Dickey. We have the opportunity to flip District 33. Why? Because no one has ever worked as hard as we have before. Well, I couldn't agree more. I mean, one of the things, as you know, that we were really intentional about was spreading the word that we wanted to encourage and support great candidates against every incumbent Democrat in Texas, because you lose 100 percent of the races you're not in. That's correct. And yes. I, I am grateful to you for stepping into the breach and for uh, taking our message of opportunity and hope and true life change and true change of the community into your community there and your district there. That is so key. Absolutely. Well, we're fighting for a nation. You know, people ask you, what am I fighting for? Well, I'm fighting for my, I'm fighting for my children's children. I have a grandson named Rafael Vasquez. And I don't need him to come to me 15 years later saying, Papa, where were you? Where were you? Were you not fighting for me then? I'm fighting, we are fighting, the Republican Party, the conservatives are fighting for our freedom. We're fighting for our constitutional rights and conservative values. And we are the last defense and we will come out victorious. Why? Because we serve a God that still sits firmly on his throne. Amen. So yeah, you were, you were talking about uh, really, really, uh, looking for clear confirmation. So you, you, you put out a fleece and you, and, and, uh, biblically, the, the biblical analogy, of, uh, you, you said, you know, I really need to see some positive signs. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that you did because spreading our message into every community as uh, we laugh, we're the, we're the GOP. We are the greater opportunity party. Uh, yes. and it's so important to spread that message. And I'm grateful for your, for you doing that. Obviously, especially in that district, the minority vote is so important. You already talked about uh, sharing values. And one of the things I'm so proud of is that our party, when our principles are advanced, the, the most needy among society benefit. Uh, President Trump, uh, the reforms he had put in, in through Congress, had had meant the lowest Hispanic unemployment ever, the yes. lowest black yes. unemployment ever, uh, yes. the lowest female unemployment since World War II. Um, yeah, well, obviously it's important to you personally, um, but but how else is it is it really important to you that we uh, that we reach out and and engage on the minority vote? That's correct. You know, the Democrats they have an agenda, and everything you just mentioned was fact. You know, we have one of the greatest presidents in our lifetime. And I do definitely believe that President Trump will be reelected for another four years. 
you know, you could throw COVID-19, you can try to destroy the economy. Um, you know, you can say, shout a Russian collusion. You can even sit in the Asian killer hornets, but you cannot stop the, the hand of God. And the minority vote is the most important vote. We do know that the Democrats are gonna to continue to play the race card all the time, every time. They do it every four years. And it seems this time, this year, they want Trump out of office so bad that it's become, it's become so radical. And what we have to do is number one, pray for our nation, pray for our president, and we have to you know, pray for our citizens. You know, what we stand for, the Republican party, the conservatives, what we stand for is we stand for faith, for family and for freedom. And you can ask, it doesn't matter what skin color you are, you are, you know, conservatives, we don't have a, we don't, we don't have a skin color. You know, we believe in those values, but the Democrats continue to, to fight and they continue to cause violence. Um, they continue to enforce uh, protests, racism, hatred towards us, but we're all God's children. And the minority vote, unfortunately, they are on a hook right now. And it's going to take us to really press through and to pray for our community, pray for our, our leaders, you know, pray for our, our nation, pray for our president, that they'll be able to awake and they'll take the blind phone off. Now, you know, we do have conservative values. We all believe in the same thing. We all cherish our children's future. You know, we all breathe the same air as quoted by President uh, John, F., John F. Kennedy. And, that, and he was the last conservative Democratic, Democratic president. You know, I had a conversation with my father um, and my father, and, and of course, it's only traditional that the Hispanic culture is, is Democrat. But we had a big, big, serious conversation. And my, my father recognized that the Democratic Party is not the same Democratic Party back then. And I believe by faith that people are, re are recognizing that, that they continue to try to uh, cause division within our own people, within our own brothers and sisters, within our own citizens. We have to do more. And as we continue to as you mentioned before, bring awareness, educate and empower. We knock on doors. We, we, we speak truth and we speak uh, knowledge. Education is the most important thing. Not to believe the fake news, not to believe the fake media, but to do your own research. You know, to vote again for your family, what is best for your family. That is the main message. And Chairman Dickey, my, my message for District 33 is clear. We can just no longer afford to vote against our own morals you know, to vote against what we believe in, what defines us and who we are for traditionally for a political party? No, no, we must vote conservative. We must vote for our faith, for our family and for our freedom. And that is my message for District 33. And people are hearing that message. It is echoing across the land here in District 33. And I am excited what God is doing in our community and what God is going to do in our nation come November 3rd. Boy, I couldn't agree more. And I am so grateful, uh, as I said, for you for stepping up and serving. Uh, running a campaign is arduous. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of mental and physical energy and, and a lot of spiritual energy when you're fighting yes. a fight. Um, and inertia is a powerful force. You know, 90% of the energy of running a car is starting it up and getting up to speed and then yes. stopping it. Uh, what what you are seeking to do is to, is to reach a group of people who are starting and they've already started in one path and to, and to move them so they're going in a different path. It's a heavy lift and I am proud to be able to support you and I am thankful, gr grateful to have you on the team and Thank you. very much. I uh, want to encourage people to support you. What, what's your website? How can they go to volunteer, to donate, or, or what have you? Absolutely. So uh, they can uh, find us at our official campaign website at www.fcv2020.com. It has all of our information, all of the events. And uh, I just want to share with you, James Dickey, that uh, since this campaign has started, a little testimony. Uh, we, with the street promotions, with the bridge promotions, the, the block walking, social media, we've already hit over 100,000. Wow. That's powerful. And the, why know. have we done that? How have we done that? Because we have a strategy. As I mentioned before, nobody has ever worked as hard as we have. And for the first time ever, we have the opportunity to flip District 33 red. We just continue to stay focused. Now, my opponent, Congressman Mark Vesey, he has 1.6 million in his war chest. Now I know that I could never outspend him, but I will outwork him. And we will win this next election in November. I will be the next Congressman. I speak life 
And uh, again, we're going to fight the good fight all the way to the end. Oh, that, that is so fantastic. And yes, uh, we've seen it over and over again. We do a lot of work at the party to provide a great foundation, but nothing happens without a candidate and work pays off every time. President Trump won, his opponent spent way more than he did. Santa Cruz won, his opponent spent more than double what he did. Yes. Uh, you too, you can... Uh, you, the the more money does not buy a victory in politics, thank God. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, we are we are going to work through this uh, for sure. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, wrap up before before you do? Um, everybody, that website was FCV for Fabian Cortez. Cordoba Vasquez, right? Correct. www.fcv2020.com. Right. So fcv2020.com. Go there, donate, uh, show your support, encourage him. It is, uh, it is a long process and a lot of work, and you have absolutely been putting in the work, and I'm so glad that we can encourage people to support you. Now, uh, with the big finish, what, how would you like to – Close things out with our with with everybody who's listening and everybody who's watching. So this next coming election in 2020 will be an election of morals. I'm not just talking about the fate of the greatest nation in the world. You know, this is not just about freedom versus socialism, but this is also spiritual warfare. And we we have to realize what we're what we're dealing against. Everyone that's listening right now that's that's online and those that will be able to see in a future presentation, you already know your assignment. Some of you are volunteers, some of you are block walkers, some of you are telemarketers, some of you are prayer warriors, and I believe that all of you are givers. So I'm asking for your support, for your permission, for your vote, and most important, your prayer to donate to this campaign as we fight the good fight. We can do better and we will do better. So I'm asking for your support, your permission as we fight the good fight together, we will win this. And again, we're fighting for our nation. We have work to do. We plant the seeds here in District 33. You don't have to live in District 3 to make a donation. Please make a donation to www.fcv2020.com. And I believe by faith and by action that you will see it with your very own eyes come November 3rd, Victory 2020. Thank you so much. Good luck and God bless. Thank you. God bless you.